Okay, thank you, Becky. I'm seeing that my screen is showing. Uh, Becky, are you seeing my screen and hearing me okay? We're hearing you just fine. I don't think we're seeing your screen yet. Okay. Okay, is my desktop showing now, Becky? There you go. Excellent. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Like Becky said, this is a, a really exciting topic for me personally. Uh, I am a middle school, high school technology integrator all the way over in India at an American school, and we've got all of our middle school and high school students jumping into the project um, and getting really excited about it and doing some really interesting things with it. And Google Apps is allowing them to take the, the notion of a science fair to a whole new level with the kinds of things that they can put um, into this online project that they're doing. And so that's why today we're going to um, work with Michael B. over there, our Google Products Marketing Manager. Michael, are you there? Well, he will be there at the end uh, to take any questions with me. He's I'm here. Uh, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Hi, Michael. Hi, sorry. I was determining how to unmute it, but I am officially here. Wonderful. Okay. So, yeah, Michael's been um, helping get a lot of the resources ready uh, for Google Science Fair, and so we'll be here to take any questions you have or jump in um, with anything um, added as we go through some of the different things you can do with your online science fair project. And so today, let's see, I've got the full screen for you. Okay, so today um, I'm first going to kind of see who's out there uh, with our participants. Uh, then we'll go through kind of the nuts and bolts of the uh, science fair, how to get registered, get some goodies for your class, and then go into the project itself and maybe how it would play out if you're a teacher, if you're a student, administrator, or a technology coordinator like me. Uh, then we'll go and dive into the tools themselves to see with each page and each part of the project, what can you insert into that page to really make it pop and show your data and um, make it really interesting to view for the judges and for anyone else who's checking out your science project. And then finally at the end, uh, we'll take questions from our lovely moderator, Becky. So as they come up throughout the presentation, go ahead and pop them into that Q&A box and we'll be sure to address a few at the end. Uh, so the first thing uh, is I'd love to know who's out there today and maybe what is your role in the Google Science Fair if you're interested in, in joining it. So if you could put in the chat box right now if you see it, um, and Becky will kind of let us know who's out there. Are you a teacher, a student, an administrator, a tech integrator? Uh, go ahead and quickly just drop in who you are. Next, we've got a science teacher, 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 uh, virtual academy teacher. Wonderful. So we've got lots of teachers out there today. Um, any admins or students or tech integrators, or do we have a full-on teacher audience today? Okay, great. We've got somebody out there who's a project manager who supports teachers, kind of like my role. Um, so that's good to know. We can look at how you can also support your teachers that way. We've got a tech integrator, another tech integrator. Wonderful. So this is really helpful to kind of set the stage for the best way to help science fair uh, roll out at your school. Thanks, everybody, for sharing your role. Okay, um, and you can kind of let us know where in the country you're from right now, just to get an idea of where we're at, or if you're out of the country like me. We've got Oregon, wonderful. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Uh, originally, we've got Georgia, 
New York, Guatemala, wonderful, another international folk out there. Philadelphia. Wonderful, okay, so um, that'll be good to know that we have an international audience out there. We'll go over the Google Translate tool, which will help um, if you do have any um, non-English speaking students at your school. Uh, and so, uh, final question, uh, have you ever done a science fair before, either digital or a poster board uh, at your school site? So we've got some no's, oh, some yeses. Okay, well that's really exciting to hear that this is the first foray into um, a digital science fair or maybe even just the analog science fair at your school. Um, so yeah, we've got somebody who's done a non-digital one before. So it'll be interesting to see how kind of the same scientific principles apply, but now we're, instead of a poster board, we're able to really uh, put some interesting things into it and also um, go for some pretty awesome prizes from Google. And we've got somebody in the middle of the science fair right now. So wonderful, good timing. I also do another um, virtual science fair with our school. Um, with the schools in Asia, so they're kind of doing both at the same time, so that's exciting. Okay, and then finally, what are you hoping to get out of today's webinar really quickly? Anybody wants to pop in the chat box? Oh, wonderful. We've got somebody from NISA Virtual Science there. That's what our uh, school participates in. If anyone has a, a goal over there, whether it's trying to just get the gist of registering for the fair or to see how specific Google Apps can help uh, amp up their, their student submissions to maybe how they can help moderate it um, as the tech and a greater level. Um, great, more info about sites that like people are interested in. With the template, ways to connect students' data and reports digitally. Great. I'll take a couple more seconds to get any other goals that people might have today for the webinar. Moderating it. Okay, great. So um, today as we go through, I'll keep those items in mind of what you're hoping to get today with site, how to connect your students, moderating it from maybe an integrative standpoint, um, and especially to know that we're kind of sprinkled across uh, the globe right now. So thanks for sharing and hope that informs uh, where we're going on our journey today. Um, and learn how to use Google with students involved in the fair. Wonderful. Uh, again, feel free to keep using that Q&A box, and if I don't address it right away, it means uh, that Becky will come to it at the end. Um, and what's kind of exciting about what you've said and um, you're hoping to get out of the webinar is that um, what, what your students learn to do with Google Science Fair, all of these tools are completely applicable to so many other projects that they might do. So at the tech integrator level or the teacher level, you're spending time getting them into this science fair template that every single one of the skills they're walking away with, um, I, I would hope that you could apply, um, whether it's presentation, Google Docs, search tools, uh, they can then take that and transfer it to a multitude of other projects. So um, let's see. I'm going to first kind of kick it off just in case. Some people are coming into the webinar wondering what exactly the Google Science Fair is. It's this great Google Science Fair intro video. It's just a couple minutes long, but I think it really um, encapsulates uh, how to get going on it. And then after that, we'll jump into the site itself.
Hey, Wendy? Yes. Are you able to hear me? This is Michael. I'm not hearing any sound. It looks like some other participants are not as well. Oh, okay. Sorry, is everyone able to hear uh, sound? Let's see. Uh-oh. Uh, hmm, I'm not sure. How about now? Yes, now I can hear it. Okay, sorry about that, guys. How about everyone else out there singing? Yeah, it's pretty low. Okay. Um, no problem. I can... This is a great video, and it's on the Google Science Care website, so... I can um, certainly walk you through it. I just like it because it has neat music and flashy effects, but I can walk you through it. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> um, our participant has mentioned that it's a video is well made enough that you almost don't need the sound, so if that's true, uh, I'm going to go through and at least play it, and then um, kind of walk you through it because it takes you through pretty quickly. Um, and this is what we'll walk through. So um, once you make the account, if you have Google accounts, um, which is great if you're a Google app school, it'll be nice and easy. Um, but there's the template that will go through, and you've got your uh, different steps that they have to, to go through, and you can go to more actions, which we'll go through, and share it with a partner, uh, if they do have partners. And um, it's nice because you can have them share what they're, they're going to own it or edit it, or if you just want someone to view it, like a teacher. Um, and then I'll kind of go through. Each one. Uh, so we'll go all through this in a in a more slower fashion. I just wanted to have the have the video kick it off. But these are the things we'll go through. All the different um, apps that you can drop into it. And final submission date is April fourth. So still plenty of time if you haven't even started yet at your school site. And they'll do a final submit, which is following the screen right here, putting in their categories. Um, and then making sure they have that site URL, putting in their team members, and submit, and they'll get that nice submission form. Okay, so again, if you wanted to, this is a great thing to show to your kids. We kind of kicked it off with each class um, in an auditorium to uh, get them excited, and it's a nice, fast way to do it, and then you can jump through and obviously go through sites at a much slower pace, but it gets the gist of things down okay. All right. Um, so now I'm going to, you're welcome to come along um, as well. I'm going to go to google.com slash science there. And that's where we'll do uh, the exploring today. And so when you first go to the science fair page, there's the sign up button right there for your kids to immediately um, put in their information and, and get their parent or guardian email um, all set up. Just like that. And um, like the video showed, they'll get a link that comes back, and that's the link that you actually click to begin creating the site. Um, before we go into creating a site, I just wanted to go to the teacher section, and one thing before you even start is to request a Google Science Fair track. And Michael, if I can just double check, that's still all going out in a timely manner if, if the teachers still want to sign up for the Science Fair track? That's correct. We batch it, uh, I think, every couple of weeks. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, we got um, it just goes here to sign up. Um, really quick Google form, and it got out really cool stickers, posters, parent um, information letters, all of which were very helpful for my teachers um, to let their parent community know, as well as kind of just advertise it around the school. The, the posters look really nice, and classes that even aren't science or aren't on board have been asking about it. Parents have been asking about it. So it's a really nice way to get the whole science uh, buzz going on at your school. Uh, oh, Wendy, yeah. excuse me, this is also a good time to plug the fact that on the same teacher's page, we're looking for teachers who are interested in potentially being judges. Oh, absolutely. So Thanks, Michael. If you, sure. If you scroll down to the teacher uh, resources for Google Science Fair section, if you scroll down slightly, uh, there's a link for being a preliminary judge, and we would love it if anyone out there is interested um, would click that link and sign up. Yeah, so it sounds like we've got a lot of teachers out there uh, in our audience right now, 
And so, like Michael said, on this teacher resource page, it says judging. Um, Right, you're interested in being a preliminary judge, click here to learn more, and it says use this registration form to register your interest in being a Google Science preliminary judge. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and so go ahead and fill out that information, and you'll be contacted um, to ask kind of your, your area of interest and submit, and you could possibly be a part of judging as well, which is pretty exciting. So um, thanks for bringing that up, Michael. Um, other teacher stuff on this page is kind of just getting ready to um, prepare your students on the science side. Um, let's get back to teacher um, So there's some really good things. There's a template, which is what you saw um, I use, um, a presentation template. And what our teachers did were, was kind of get them ready by uh, using that presentation template and putting in certain things that they wanted, timelines, um, and all of that to kind of help guide the process for their class. And they use this presentation template to kind of kick it off for their kids. So as a tech integrator, that's something you could certainly do too, is kind of prepare a little package to send out to your science teachers um, and click with a presentation maybe on it um, to get people going. So that's one idea as well. Um, and there's some other really good things on, I won't go too much into because it's more of the um, science and pedagogy aspect of it, but there's some really great resources here on how you can help scaffold um, each stages of the science fair um, with uh, giving examples. Um, and so as you go through, and kind of what our, our teachers are doing for each stage is visiting this teacher section um, before they begin the hypothesis, before they begin their research. Uh, and we'll go through each one of these pages very shortly and see how Google Tools can, can help them reach um, different parts of the project. And there's also some really cool motivating um, uh, tips in here, too. So especially our teachers out there, I'd really kind of spend some time and, and look here because there's some really good ideas that we don't have time to touch on today. But great page, teacher resource page. It's right up here on the top um, under teachers where you can also sign up. You can also down, uh, download uh, parent info and things like that if you want to electronically shoot it up to a listserv that you might have. Um, okay, so once you've got your materials, you've kind of uh, got your teacher's prep, you've um, either introduced it to your students by video or um, uh, using the presentation template, get them excited. The thing that really got our kids excited was showing them the prizes, a uh, real huge motivating factor. Plus, it's Google, so they were really excited that um, they're being part of the first, you know, global science fair where anybody, almost anyone in the world can be a part of. Um, and so we kind of just shot through the possible things that they could win, including the National Geographic Expedition, scholarships, um, really cool internships, um, with the participating sponsors like Lego um, and CERN and, and Scientific America. So kind of going through that is uh, something that, that's a nice motivating factor and to kick it off um, as well. So we definitely spent some time going through that. And then once you've got all that ready, you can actually um, start to look at the Google site, which is what the basics of the Google Science First submission is is a site, and Google Sites make it really easy to, uh, especially with this template, for your students to um, put their data and their information in a variety of ways. So I'm going to click on over to um, what will look like after your students click the link, um, because, again, you have to get that um, confirmation link that comes to you that says your parent or guardian has approved, um, and then you can, you'll get this. Uh, which, again, you'll want to click Science Fair Project Template um, and go ahead and name your site. And, again, um, no last name, so if I wanted to make mine Wendy's um, you know, Static Electricity, you can put that in there. And I just want to keep the Science Fair Template. Put in my lovely code. And I've got this uh, submission up. 
that I'm ready to go with. And so as a second grader or a teacher, you're welcome to um, use the template to kind of walk them through each step. Um, what's working for our teachers right now is really kind of doing a brief overview like I'm doing and then either giving a project management kind of timeline saying, I, you know, we'd like, as a teacher, I'd like to check your hypothesis by, uh, you know, February 15th and then I'd like you to, uh, you know, have your, have your research done by this date. So as a teacher and tech integrator uh, at the school level, if you really wanted to manage it nicely, um, you could always get that timeline out and rolling. Um, for everybody or at the class level if you wanted a little bit more flexibility, but we found that it's really helped our, our students keep on track um, to go through all of the steps, which I'm sure you all have seen with regular science fairs that you've been a part of. Um, and something that Google Science Fairs put up on their site, which is a great resource, is um, our actual PESCA, a student who, she's right there, has created a sample project. and so. Even letting your students just see that before they dive into the Google Site template is a great way to get ideas um, for how they can uh, put things on the project. So I'll kind of just go for each one back and forth between test kits and she's filled up nicely. And there's also some good um, tips on the side for what is a project summary um, and a judge's tip for it. Um, so and. Going back over to mine, Wendy's got us electricity, you'll see I can go to Get Started. And in case you can't find Tesco, it's right there, sample Google Science Fair project submission. Um, and then there's also a link to the resource guide as well um, for you to get rolling. So if I can Get Started, I'm on my project summary page, and then there's Tesco. So pretty close. Um, and once I'm ready, I can go up here to the top, and it's pretty simple um, navigation. It's either we won't really be creating any new pages because we're using the template. So all students really um, the options that they have are to edit the page, or they can go to more actions where um, they can share it with uh, their their project partner right here. So if I wanted to share this with Michael. I don't know if he's coming up with mine. But I can choose somebody right here, um, and I can say I want them to edit. If it's my teacher and I just want them to view, um, I can find, you know, and say I just want you to view it if you're my teacher. Um, or if I want to have um, my other, you know, student partner, I can put in edit. I can drop in a little message. And I can send a copy to myself as well, uh, and then I can share. And then next time I go to this, I'll be able to see all the people on my document um, that I'm with. So I should be able to see my teacher if they are viewing it, and Michael as my partner if he's editing it with me, and press share. And I can also always use this link uh, to shoot out to anybody, which is just google.site.google.com slash site slash Wendy Static Electricity. Okay, so once I've shared it out with um, with who I'm going to do be showing um, it with or sharing it with, I am ready to edit it. And you'll see that your um, the cursor pops up for students, so they probably won't be changing the title on any of these pages. So you can let them know that below it is fair game. And if we go over to Tesco's, we can see that the um, video. This is a great chance for your summary to use a video or a presentation to um, let the judges know in a really two-minute brief, concise, but interesting way, what is my project all about? Um, and this will probably be done, you know, towards the end, even though it comes at the first. This is something that you can let your students know, um, start thinking about how you want to, you know, capture the end of it. And so if I were here on the project summary page, um, and I wanted to embed a video, for instance, I can go up along the top, and I'll see I have insert, format, table layout, and your typical editing tools up here that students should be familiar with, with Microsoft Word or Google Docs or any editing program. Uh, but in this case, I'll put my cursor where I want my video, and I have... Um, I can go through here, and now we'll see through all of the things that we can drop in. 
And as we go through each page, we'll practice dropping in different um, elements to the page. But right now, um, we want to put in, in this case, I'll put in a, a, a video. If I had it uploaded to Google Video or YouTube, I can click right there, and then I can paste um, the URL of it. And so in this case, I'll just grab this Google Science Fair video URL by copying up there. Oh, and Michael, we have a good question. Did the sidebar tip stay on um, for the entire um, the entire duration of the project, or uh, can students delete them if they don't want them? Students can absolutely delete them, but uh, we don't have any kind of mechanism that automatically removes them, but we opted to keep them in just because we thought they'd be helpful. Sure, yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to, looks like right there you can highlight and get rid of there. But it's a nice thing to keep them throughout. Okay, and then you'll see my video has been embedded, and the uh, judges don't have to click the link to get, uh, get to it. If I go to save... Uh, the YouTube video will pop up right there and be able to be watched. So a student summary video can easily uh, be clicked right and, and be able to watch no problem. Uh, likewise, you can edit just like Tessica did by going back to edit. And if you look over on her project summary page, um, it's not too long, but enough to explain the, the basics of the project. So I can edit text in that very same way. And press save. And there we go. And so now if I am, um, a good thing to do with partners is kind of either have them divvy it up by saying, um, you know, I'm going to do maybe this page or I'm going to do a paragraph of it. And so that's what's nice is that um, once you have a collaborator on your document, I got, if I invited Michael, um, he can come and edit as well and add his own parts. Um, so that's the project summary page, and that's how you can insert a video into it. Um, the next step, which is the first step, if we go to it, um, is summary. And uh, it's really nice and simple template, 250 words or less. You can kind of check out Tesca's as well. And really nice, it's great to read it because you can kind of uh, help students see how they can write with a nice energetic voice and really help their passion for their topic come through here. Um, and that's the About Me page. Um, another thing that you can do is if you wanted to um, insert anything onto each page, you're welcome to. So helping students see on each page what tools um, might be useful here. Um, and so we'll go to step two, which is the question. And this is a really good time in the project to help use Google search tools. Um, as they're starting to kind of formulate around what they're interested in and um, what possible topics they could do. Um, something that our school is doing, and I know I, I, there's a couple of Nisa Science Fair people out there, um, is having kind of e-mentors um, that they can talk to. So that might be a high school um, student if you want to do any mentorships or anything like that. Or even um, we have a couple teachers at our school contacting local university um, geologists or whatever the topic might be, shooting them out an email and um, asking if, um, you know, they can get any research or, or, or do an email chat or um, do a Skype with the classroom. So those are all options for during the question phase as a way to help your student uh, frame what they have. And so if you go over to the Google Science Search page, I'll go ahead and keep up Cheska's, mine, and go back to the Google Science Fair page. Again, google.com slash science fair. And um, resources, this is a really great place to stop by. Um, we go under Google search, and your students can come here too, and I recommend even just putting this up on the screen and kind of going through it. But um, once they have kind of their keywords, like mine, static electricity, or, um, you know, and whatever their topics might be that they're interested in, um, going through the different ways that Google can help you uh, go through information, which is what um, Google is, is best at. Um, oh, I'm going to make this full screen really quick. There we go. And 
And from here, I'm not showing it in India for some reason. My Google India won't show it. But um, when you go to Google search um, and you put in, in this case, if it's hydrogen, you can, on the sidebar, you can go to um, standard view, and below it, you can go to Wonder Wheel, um, which will put it in this really nice graphic organizer um, and lead you to different parts of whatever your search is. And that's been something um, that can really help uh, somebody who has an idea of what they want to look at with their partner, but um, still kind of brainstorming. Um, so the Wonder Wheel is this really cool um, search term, but it's a search tool, but it's not working on right now with me in India. Um, some other things that you can do um, and help little search tips you can help your students um, glom on to is uh, going through um, the magnifying glass. We'll pull up a, a page of it if they want to see kind of what the source is, um, you know, and helping talk to them about good sources. Um, that's a great tool that you can use as well. Um, and you can also go to advanced search to look for um, specific things or more specific key terms that you want to do right here. Um, so yeah, and that, that they were looking for a certain file types that could help. Uh, you can really hone down, I, I want to look for photosynthesis uh, with this word. Um, so advanced search is a, is a great thing. And you can also involve your librarian in the, um, the search the search question topic time as well. And what we've done here that's been successful is kind of help uh, them look at some Google search tools and other search tools you might have at your library and helping this question process um, be a kind of a school-wide event. And again, there's more, lots more search um, tools that here, even a PDF that you can kind of have available uh, for your students as well. Um, so just a few search tips that can um, help them uh, get their topic on their own. Um, some other search things that they can do. Okay. Um, they can go to um, alert, and I'll go to google.com slash alert. And while they're during, uh, during this, you know, one or two week topic phase where they're getting their question down, um, they can create themselves alert for any time something that happens um, in the news that Google gets, it will send you a notification. Um, and so in this case, if I wanted to see if any new research comes out about static electricity or, you know, whatever the topic might be, I can say how often I want it um, and where I want it sent to and create alert. And, then, and I can always go back to my Google Alerts and get rid of them after that so I don't three years down the line um, and not getting static electricity hit uh, to my email box. Um, so that's alerts and that you can have quite a few. Um, and so we found kids who were being helped by this because uh, they had four different topics that they couldn't decide on. Um, and one just kept getting lots and lots of great information on. Uh, so they decided to go with that, knowing that their their search and research uh, process would go a little bit easier because there's more information out there about their topic. So that's a Google alert. Um, another great one um, is Google Trends, a uh, little search tool. And these are all on the resource page that you can go to. And at this one, um, Google will um, kind of take one or two things and see how they go out, uh, how they relate to each other. And so one really good uh, way is, so one thing that shows Google Trends well is flu. Um, and you can really see at what times of the year um, flu is searched for, uh, right? So if they were looking at any other parts of their topic, it, it doesn't work as well for some things as others, but if they had a topic, you know, to drop it in here to at least see um, how it's playing out in the world of search, uh, which might get them some information. Uh, you know, if they're looking at something uh, that on the human sciences side of things that people use, any kind of that data, this might be um, just an interesting way that they can show it. And you can always, um, you know, show them how to take a screenshot of something like this or just drag it out, and then they can insert this image if this has to do with their research or question. Um, drag it out, and then they can drop that image right onto their um, onto their question page or whatever page it might be. Just Google Trends. We've got Google um, Alerts. 
the main search tools and functions that you can use. And then if they're interested in kind of just getting more scholarly stuff, they can go to Google Scholar as well. And this is, they can plug in their topic and kind of find refereed articles um, on their topic to help them kind of get an idea of what's already out there or things that they could possibly do. Um, and that is Google Scholar. So that's some search tool, but again, I encourage you to kind of go back to the um, Google Science Fair page. And again, under resources, if you go under Google resources, there's alert, um, scholar, trends, um, all of those, which can kind of walk you through it with uh, screenshots of what you can do. Um, it's just going too fast, or if you want to take your tips through it. So that's search. Um, what we can go through next is go back to site. Let's see, so I'll go back to mine and Tesco's. Um, so if I'm on here. Okay, so I've got these search tools. I've got my question down um, with my with my partners, and I'm going to put it, um, whatever it might be. Again, I go to edit anything that might fit in here that has to do with my question. You know, if, uh, I'm welcome to go to insert um, and find through. We already put in a video, um, but you can kind of go through and see at which stage um, might something fit really well in. And in this case, I'll just put some text. And save. And then we'll go on to uh, step three. And we'll look over at Tesco step three, the hypothesis. And this is a good, uh, a good chance to use um, Google Docs as a collaborative tool with their projects. Um, that we've done with our students' hypothesis is a great time to start brainstorming and, and writing things up. Um, so if you wanted to use a Google Doc, since they all already have Google accounts, um, they can go to docs.google.com and they can they'll uh, be able to log in with their Google accounts that they have and they can go right up here to create new and document in our case. And now I've got a fresh uh, document that if I wanted to start kind of working with my partners on the hypothesis, you know, I can put in notes as I go through um, different websites as I'm using my Google search tools. Um, you know, I can put, ooh, I found this cool trend. So this can be a great um, collaborative workspace as you're getting ready uh, to post it onto the hypothesis page. And you might not want to use the hypothesis page as a, as a collaboration zone, kind of more as a um, maybe final product area. But if, so if I'm working with Michael, I'll go ahead and name it really quick, hypothesis, Wendy and Michael. And now I'm ready to share it out to Michael so that only Michael and I can, can edit it. And again, I'll go up to share. You'll notice with all Google Docs, it's saved automatically, which is uh, every few seconds. This is amazing for kids. Um, we'll go to sharing settings. And again, same thing. All the docs work the same with sharing it. Uh, I'm going to add Michael as an editor and maybe add my teacher as a viewer as well, or my tech integrator um, who might be moderating the entire project if you'd like to um, be on that as well. Um, so I'll go through there and share. Okay, um, and so now Michael and I could even be on here at the same time. So if I have a computer lab period or if I'm one-to-one -one and have laptops out, um, it's a great time to use that hour period for me and Michael to be on this document together um, and we can chat with each other and it'll show who's made what changes. And so as a teacher and as a tech integrator, you can come in and kind of see what the changes have been or can chat along and, and live edit it as well. Um, and you can see right there, it's just private to me and Michael. Um, so for the hypothesis stage, this might be a great way to introduce the Google Doc itself. Um, and if the final Google Doc is something that um, uh, is presentable and you'd like to show it, you can certainly embed the document itself inside of, uh, of any of these uh, site pages. 
So if I go back to mine, I can go to edit. And just like I went to insert and inserted my video, you'll see that I can include any of my documents that I make, including spreadsheet, presentation, um, or a form. So I'll just go up here to document. And I'll see a whole list of all my documents I have. And uh, it's not something that uh, if you had a final product or if you wanted somebody to um, jump into the document with you, um, it might be something that you could embed. Um, but if they're just working on it and their final product, if you just want it to be the text, then I would probably just use the text uh, there. But it is something that you can embed if you wanted to. Okay, um, so that is something that you could use for hypothesis. I'll go ahead and save my changes. Okay, and if I go to my next step, uh, the research phase, and again, you have uh, 500 words here. And if I go over and look at uh, Tesco's, I can kind of see what she's got. And so, Again, she's got her text here. We've got our, our tips on the side um, for their research itself. Something that really works well for research is the Google form. Um, if you want to, as you're doing your research and getting ready to collect your data, which is um, coming up, you can make a Google form. So to do that, I go back to my Google Doc. Doc.google.com. And again, I'll go to create new. Oh, and somebody asked, um, where's the doc I embedded? And I think I didn't end up embedding it. I think I was just showing I didn't save the actual doc itself. But I can go back here and show what an embedded doc looks like. And now you'll get to see kind of what embedded form looks like. So um, something that our students are doing right now with forms to collect data, um, we've got, it's kind of neat because our kids are shooting out to teachers and to students uh, ways to collect data about like their sleeping patterns or uh, eating patterns or things that are related to their question. Um, and so creating a form, they can um, put in their question. So question, um, you know, sleep patterns or whatever your whatever data that you want to collect from a sample audience. Um, and you can choose your questions here. Um, Um, again, you can put any more info here, like I'm doing my science there. Please take a moment to um, to fill out this anonymous survey. Um, and you can choose your question type here. So if I wanted to put in, you know, four to five hours, five to six, I can do uh, different options. And done. And you can add as many as you like. And there's a lot of really cool things you can do with forms that if you're interested in showing your students even further, um, you can check out our resource page to really get get into it. Um, you can also make a theme with it as well. Um, pick something simple for right now and, and apply. And now I'm ready to email this out. Um, so I can, you know, send it out to my class, to my teachers, to my family, um, whoever I might want to send it to. I'll send it to myself. And I can include the form in the email so they don't have to click to anything to give me the data. Or they can just click a link and be taken to the page and send it out. And then students can consider their responses um, by checking out a spreadsheet, which will then give them some pretty nice Data. So if I had 30 people who responded and I've got a varying amount of hours here, I can um, view it as a summary to get a nice pie chart. Um, if I wanted to show, unfortunately I don't have any response on this one, but you can, a graphic would come up for them that they then could embed into their research page. Um, so that's a really brief overview of forms. There'll probably be some more, uh, a Google Form webinars that happen, and there's archived Google Form webinars, as well as some really good um, online resources to show your students. But the form is an excellent and easy way for your students to collect some data. So I'll come back over to uh, my page, 
And if I want to go back and edit my page again. Um, great question. We have how to find um, other webinars. At the end, I've got a link where you can see um, all of the archived webinars as well as new ones uh, that are coming up. So if I have a, a form that I want to insert under my research, I can go to insert. And if I want them to look at the spreadsheet, I can always put in spreadsheet itself. And there's my sync pattern, there's my form. And so I'll press save this time. I think last time I deleted the doc, which is why I didn't see it. Okay, and so then the spreadsheet itself would come up. And again, I don't have any data here, um, but that's a good way to immediately put in any kind of spreadsheet data that um, the person has. And you don't even have to collect it by form. If they're collecting their data by another way, such as maybe they're trying out on a, on a you know, RC car and they want to see how fast it goes with different types of wheels, they could um, go back to their spreadsheet. Um, so if I wanted to create my own spreadsheet, like a Excel document, and um, I can name my columns, I can put in my times myself with my partner, and I can collaborate on it just like I did with my Google Doc. I can come up here to share. Um, I can share and invite Michael if I don't want you to name it. Um, invite Michael, and then he can, I can say, hey, can you test it out at home? Put it in column B, I'll do it in column C and we can work together from home on our project as well. So that's, and then this spreadsheet could be embedded into the research page or another page as well. Um, and if you wanted to show the form itself, we've got a question, um, what if you want to show the form um, actually on the site? And you can, but um, the form itself would be live, and so um, once you submit your project, it probably, uh, you don't want the live form on there anymore as it's kind of a completed uh, form. So the showing either the graphical representation of your responses or your spreadsheet is probably the best route to um, show your data. Okay, so that is research and um, spreadsheets and forms that you can easily embed, collaborate on with, with your partner, and um, also uh, use, even just use to get your information. All right, so let's Roll on over to step five. And the experiment itself. And so this might be a good opportunity to use photos um, of things that are going on because sometimes it's the most richest uh, visuals that are happening when you've got your kids with their uh, goggles on or they're outside, uh, you know, setting up their experiment. And it's Hi all, it looks like we lost Wendy's audio, um, so please hold on a second and we will um, you know, reconnect with her in a second. Thank you. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, hopefully you can hear me and we will um, uh, hang out on the line until Wendy gets back. But until then, I thought that I could perhaps um, answer some of your questions that you've got. 
so um, let's see. Some of the questions I see on here, one is about uh, are students allowed to modify the divs? And that's a reference to the formatting of the Google site. And the answer is um, yes, students are required to use the template. Um, so it has to have the header and it has to have all of the sections as we've laid them out from summary to submit your project. However, um, if within the text area, the editing area, students want to affect the format, that's fine. Uh, so that's answering that question. And then will this webinar be available to show colleagues at a later time? I believe it is being recorded, Dana. Uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, um, we are recording all the webinars, and I will send a follow-up email tomorrow um, with a link to the information to this webinar and then our resource center, which houses all the webinars that we've done um, in terms of professional development for Google Apps. So you will have that link in your inbox tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so um, let's see. What, what else? While we're waiting, um, the most important thing that we haven't talked about yet um, is the final section that you saw at the top there, submit your project. Um, that is the section of the site that students will want to go to when they are ready to submit their project. Um, ideally, they'll be done and not um, needing to make any additional edits, but um, students have until the 4th of April to submit their final project. So if anything changes between the point at which they submitted and the 4th, um, that will still be counted. Uh, the way the submission works is on that submission page, there is a link to a form, and on that form, students fill out their information, including their name, uh, their age group, their partners, if there were any partners on the project, and then critically, the most important thing is that they have to take a link to their Google site and place it um, into this form so that we can associate their project submission with their email address. So um, that is very important, and again, that is the last step, um, it is the Submit Your Project tab at the top. Now, I've lost the presentation. Yeah, I think uh, that um, uh, Wendy has been disconnected somehow. Um, I know she's located in India, so the connection must be um, not as strong. But while we're waiting, and we'll give her a few minutes to pop back on, um, something that Wendy was trying to show that I don't think that she was able to... Um, that we were able to see was actually what collaboration would look like in a document. So, um, Michael, I'm going to go ahead and share a document with your, um, with your Google account. Okay. And we'll just tell the um, users on the webinar what it would look like to work on a project together. And then eventually embed that into a site. Okay, I'm in. Great. Um, let me go ahead and share that. So, um, as you can see, I from uh, my document, I can see exactly where Michael's cursor is and what he's typing as he's typing it. So, they were working on a project together, and um, he, you know, whatever he's typing, I can see. And then I don't have to worry about ever being locked out of a document or having to check out a document. So here I am, and I can say, you know, I'll do the hypothesis part, and then start adding it. If I have Google Talk, I don't have to go back into Talk to um, see what, um, to ask Michael a question. I can tap him right in the collaboration window, and I say, you know, uh, thanks for filling out these sections, and then, he can go ahead and fill out the sections of the various docs. Um, if I need to put a comment, I love how Michael started a comment here. Um, he wanted to name it something different. I can add it, you know, Google, Science, Fair, Extravaganza. Makes it, you know, a way more engaging. And then if I really need to take out the, the comment, we can take it out. So I don't want to see it anymore. And then what's also great about, you know, then if your students are working on a project together and someone totally messes it up, we can go and see the revision history of the document. So this is what I originally wrote. I'm in green, and I originally wrote that. Um, and then these were the edits that what Michael wrote and that what I wrote, you know, I can see the difference between that. And that way it holds everyone who's working on the project accountable for doing their share of the Google Science project. Thanks so much, Michael. I see that Wendy um, is back online, so I'm going to reconnect her so that she can continue with her presentation. Thanks, guys.
I bet you. Sorry about that. Sometimes my Skype connection over here in India um, is less than stellar. So I, I appreciate that you guys jumped right in to see what collaborating live looks like. Um, and you can see how easy it is to track what's going on um, amongst different people um, in your project. So thanks for doing that. And I know we're just about out of time. Um, so I was showing um, how you can insert photos into it. Um, as well as entire Picasso web albums if they've got 20 pictures um, of their experiment and they don't want it to slide on down the whole page, they can always go and, and go to Picasso, um, a Google product, and um, then once they make it on Picasso, they can insert their slideshow right there. Um, but there's tons of things that you can do, and we've really just kind of glossed um, the tip of it, which is why it's so nice that Google sci uh, Science Fair site has really good tutorials that you can kind of go through um, on your own. There, I'll just go through the last couple of pages. Observations, conclusion, work cited, and then finally submitting the project. Um, and again, you've got till April 4th. Hopefully this is um, glossed over how you and your students can get started with it. Um, some of the things that you can insert with Google Apps um, I definitely encourage you, if you're really interested in using Google Docs, um, Forms, spreadsheets, to um, learn even more about them. And um, again, going to the Science Fair website, just to recap, before we do Q&A, the um, page under Resources, Again, each one of these tools, and even more that I didn't even get to touch on, such as SketchUp to make 3D models, um, Google News, um, Google Earth and Maps, especially if they're trying to uh, compare different um, areas. Um, there's make beautiful visuals that they can, again, go to the insert function on Google Sites and drop it in just like we did anything else um, so it's nice and embedded. Um, Google Talk so that they can um, do video chat with, um, with their partners and also a little bit more about videos. So um, as a second grade or teacher, I encourage you to kind of go through which ones of these you'd like to show your students. But as you saw with text guys, even just uh, the basic function of editing, putting in your text, um, you know, video or presentation, um, sometimes that and with a good experiment um, is all, all that you might need. And so I'll pop back over here really quick. Okay, and I believe we were okay. Go back to our slide that we were at. Um, again, so after submissions, um, you know, you're welcome to kind of partner with another class. Uh, I encourage these are things that are working well at the tech integrated site. Um, and connecting students' project with a community need. Um, so after April ends and they put their submission off, um, looking at what each one uh, person has done and see is there anything we can do as a kind of hands-on project to extend or share with our community um, what we've done with the science fair. Uh, and to conclude, um, somebody asked earlier, um, where can I get more um, more apps at? And I put this down as just a URL shortener. Um, but if you put in that, you'll get to this page, which is Google Apps for Education page. And you can, there's a great resource center that we're on. And it's got past webinars. You'll see ours pop up if you want to come back into it any time. Um, there's a good one, Google Sites for Educators, right here, um, by another Google Certified Teacher, Andy. Um, I watched that one to really, you saw what Becky and Michael were doing with collaborating on the doc. It'll really delve into that uh, if you plan on using that, Google Forms, Google Spreadsheet uh, to put into your site. Um, you can go to there. Um, and then the core features of Google Apps, that's another great one to watch. It'll go through search, doc, sites, and calendar um, as well. And then the collaborative STEM classroom might be a cool one as well, um, looking at um, some of the topics that your students might be doing. Um, and so I would, you know, check this one out. Everybody now is on a listserv to where they can get um, new topics that will come out from Dana or Becky. Um, and we hope that you can be a part of uh, the community of learning more about Google Apps. And that Google Science Fair will not only 
and be a great project for you that you'll have students who now all know how to use these wonderful collaborative tools and can use them for a variety of other projects. Um, uh, upcoming is managing docs with your class, so that's next Tuesday, so that might be a perfect uh, next one to attend. Um, so once, if you want your kids collaborating on a hypothesis document, what would that actually look like um, in detail? And then February 22nd, building a class site, so that I'll go through the site process in much more detail, and um, also how you can, as a teacher, once you've done making the science fair, uh, template, you can actually take those skills and make yourself a class site with homework assignments, et cetera. Um, you can also follow Google Science Fair on Twitter uh, or subscribe to their blog. They've got some cool updates. I'm on Twitter, too, if you want to collaborate with any of our students in India. If you have any questions for me, um, here's my Twitter, but we also have Google Science Fair Twitter up, and they've got the, the uh, webinar right here. A nice little tidbits like showing your kids the judging criteria page. Um, and things like that. So we encourage you to continue being part of the community, and I'll hand it over to Becky to see any other questions that might be out there. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was super informative. If I was still a classroom teacher, I would definitely be having my students go to Google Science Fair as soon as possible. Um, while you were disconnected, we answered the questions that we saw in the question and answer box, but, um, oh, this is a good one. How did you get parental consent for your students to participate? Do you want me to answer that one, Wendy? Yeah, yeah, go for it, Michael. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, the process for parental consent is automated. So when a student signs up, they're required to enter in the email address of their parent, and then an email ad an email will get sent to that parent's email address, and then the parent has a link that they have to click on in that email to complete a form, and then that is um, the completion of the consent process. Thanks, Michael. Any other questions? Please put them in the Q&A window. We'll give you a few more minutes, but um, I Wendy did a, you did a really great job of answering the questions as they came up in the box. So um, I feel like our, our attendees, you guys got your questions answered as they came up. So if there's anything else you'd like to see, um, you know, let us know and we'd be happy to show it right now as well. Oh, that's a great question, Becky, and I know that this can be the, um, the hindrance to a lot of teachers taking on a project like this. And I think um, with the science project, again, the time management of it, making sure that you set kind of deadlines and setting aside either if it's your science period, um, you know, it might be setting time one day a week to work on it or setting it as a great homework piece, especially since you can work online from home. A lot of our students are doing their collaboration as part of their homework. is a really authentic way to do homework. Um, but also integrating it with the other disciplines. So during your um, literature time, it's a great opportunity to be looking for Google Scholar or to be um, researching things or working with your librarian or asking other classes. Um, so if it's your science fair, uh, if, you're, if you teach, you know, high school bio, um, but you would, you know, you'd love to have maybe um, another class, like a computer science class that they might also be taking, asking them if there's any way to, that you can collaborate with that, if they'd like to give time for any students or if they can include any component of that, of whatever their curriculum is. Um, so this is a great time for tech integrators or for um, admin or to, to celebrate the Google Science Fair as an opportunity to, to be multidisciplinary and um, so that it isn't just the one hour of science you might have, you know, in the day, uh, but to see how that can be uh, used as a great time 
uh, during other parts of the subject. So um, those, those are things that uh, I used to teach classroom science as well, and uh, that's the only way I could get uh, more science in the classroom was through reaching out and um, using these other time periods as well. I don't know if you have anything to add about that, Michael. I don't think I can speak to it as well as you can, but I think, you know, you hit on all the key points. Uh, you know, I hopefully we've provided enough resources uh, so that it's not as big of a bear as it potentially could be. Yeah, and we have some students at our school side whose teachers aren't participating in it, whether they're uh, not science teachers or whatever it might be, um, but maybe having an advisor. We actually have an after-school club that started for it that could let any students that weren't, um, didn't have teachers who were heading it, if they could, students could still independently take it up on their own or, you know, having a school site advisor, um, you know, science club, whoever runs that kind of stuff, or even asking a parent or um, I'm, I'm running, I have a geek squad at my school, so me and the geek squad are helping out any students that might not have the class component of it as well. So even if it's not integrated into your curriculum, it's a great opportunity maybe for after school or student uh, independent research projects as well. Great. Well, um, if there aren't any more questions, um, I think that we, you know, talked a lot today. We've gotten a lot more information about the Google Science Fair. Again, this webinar will be recorded, um, and I will send out the link to all attendees um, and all registrants. Um, thank you so much again, Wendy, for um, hosting this. And, um, you know, I, I think you gave everyone permission to reach out to you on Twitter if they have any more questions. So we'll be sure to do that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I, again, if anyone wants to share projects or talk, or do Skype or anything, we're all about kind of collaborating here in India. So um, thanks for putting up with uh, my uh, technical difficulties. And thank you, Becky uh, and Michael, for being here today and helping moderate and um, lend some great advice to our participants. And I hope to see you guys all on the science desk. Great. Thanks, Wendy. That was awesome. Yep. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.